Hi folks, this is uh, uh, a video clip for a uh, video segment for uh, uh, an assembly problem which involves bolts. Already there is a chapter, chapter 17 in the book, where bolts are discussed. However, that problem I'm going to show to you here. Basically, you have two plates which are bolted together and the bolt is literally modeled exactly like what you see here. Uh, by the way, the, the left side uh, of these plates are clamped and there is some kind of a load applied to the, uh, the, the edge of the longer plate. Now, there's nothing wrong with this as long as you want to, want to find the detailed stress distribution for the bolt and uh, in the vicinity of the bolt, for example. However, in situations where our hundreds of bolts involved. This is not a practical way of uh, doing the problem because the bolts probably require very fine grid, a uh, very fine mesh. Of course, in this case, there's only one, uh, there's only one mesh, so uh, one bolt, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so in a situation like that, where there are many, many bolts needed to model the problem. One uses the concept of virtual bolt, and uh, that's exactly the problem that I'm going to be doing for you in this video clip. So the situation is as follows. Uh, without worrying about any dimension, now real life is not like that, of course. What I have is a box, let's think about it as a box, like that. It's a hollow box, so we'll just say that it's like so. Okay, and then this has a cap, there's a cap, which is supposed to, uh, with a lid, which is supposed to go on top of it. And these are uh, tightened through two bolts. So uh, one on this side and the other one on that side. Okay? So these two go together and these line up and, uh, uh, you know, uh, you create a virtual bolt. As you will see, I will not model the actual bolt like it is in the chapter chapter 17. Uh, now let's see, uh, uh, oh, and, and the, the, the inside of this thing is pressurized. So let's say this is a, I don't know, this is a pressure vessel, a thick wall pressure vessel. That's why I'm not modeling it with shell, but everything is pressurized on the inside. Okay, so now that we know this thing, ignoring all dimensions, I'm going to go to Katia and do this problem. First thing I'm gonna do is save this thing, file, save management, Save as, going to the desktop, a new folder, so I say virtual bolt problem, virtual bolt, virtual bolt assembly. So this is the final, uh, final problem on assembly that we're going to be doing. All right, good. So now we're going to insert the first component, new part in there. And this is going to be the box. I'm not going to rename these things, so I'll just make it uh, call it part one, but it is actually the bottom portion, which is the box. So I will sketch. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, th by the way, this problem has many, has, uh, let's see now, uh, two planes of symmetry, which I'm not going to model. Please keep in mind, on the exam, you will be asked to model any plane of symmetry. The planes of symmetry in this particular problem x y z assuming that all the dimensions are the same everything is pressurized there is a there is a y z plane of symmetry and there is an x z plane of symmetry obviously there is no x y but i'm not going to model that okay so uh let's do this okay so this is going to be the hollow box exit add it Oh, one thing I forgot. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, let me uh, let me cancel this thing. I'm gonna go back to that sketch. So this first, I'm gonna okay. Let me let me delete this thing slightly. Exit. Add it. Okay. So how about point uh, point three? Okay. Good. On this face, I will sketch. There are other ways of doing it. You can create a 
literally a box and he uses a shelling operation to remove material from it so let's see now this control that we wanted to coincident okay and this control this we also want them to be coincident okay now for the inside uh, portion of the box we're going to do this and we're going to pad this thing as high as we want okay that's good now on the space i will sketch and this is where the uh the bolt is going to go so uh there it is so this is where the bolt is going to go and uh, I'm going to mirror this thing on the other side, okay? So mirror this with respect to that. Exit. And we're going to make a pocket here because uh, this is where the bolt is going to get inserted. So make a park pocket, not all the way. So let's make it a point, I don't know, point 0.4 inches. Let's see how that looks like. Okay, good. That's good. All right. Now we're going to insert the next part, insert the cap, insert a new part. So you know this is going to be the cap, okay, or the lid. So we're going to make that. And uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to actually project this entire silhouette. So on a convenient plane, on this plane, I will sketch. And being lazy, I will project that entire silhouette. Exit. Okay, and then we're going to pad this. Pad this thing. Uh, yeah, so let's make it thinner. 0.3, as it looks like. And there it is. Keep in mind. Oops, oh, I forgot about this guy. Sorry, let's go back to that sketch. Okay, back to that sketch. I really don't want these things. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. Delete this and delete this. Now exit. There it is. Okay. Good. Uh, now uh, let, let me change the color of this. So let's change it to I don't know yellowish perhaps. Graphics yellow. Well, right, let's make let's assume that everything is made out of steel. So we're gonna we're gonna apply steel to the material. Where is the fire material? Right there. Metal. Steel. On the assembly and say OK. And let's save everything before generating structure analysis. So now we're going to go to uh, what do you want? Uh, uh, yeah, generating structure analysis. Immediately these two are going to get meshed. Please keep in mind that one has to be careful about the size mesh conversion study and the size of these things. But I'm being reckless here, so I'm going to make everything uh, small 0.2. Okay. And in fact, if you look at the mesh, you can see what happens here. There we are. If you want to see the, the element edges, change the rendering. And if you want these things to be a different color, say, this bottom one so we're going to property we're going to change it from that to i don't know maybe uh that color there okay so there we are notice that these things don't match because these are meshed independently so we deactivate this all right so first thing we want to do is to make sure that uh well let's let's say that actually uh well how about uh fix uh fix well, how about fixing uh, uh, these two corners, okay? Well, actually, these two edges. So I fix this edge. Perhaps it's welded to uh, another, I don't know, uh, structure. Then the inside is pressurized. So I'm going uh, to hide this. And we're going to apply pressure. Again, these are dummy numbers. I'll show you this value. I want it to be plus so that the direction is flipped in this edge this face and that face and that face and this face 
Okay, let's also get the other fellow, the bottom of that. Uh, this may be a problem because that's the silhouette, so I'm going to hide this. Oh, no, actually, maybe maybe it is okay. So let's see now. We're going to check that. Uh, say okay. Uh, just a word of caution here. Although, because I'm too lazy, I'm doing it like this. You have to realize that the way I'm doing it, this is not strictly correct because what happens, the pressure is also applied to uh, these uh, these places where they're actually touching each other. In reality, there's a gasket here, or if you don't have the gasket, the pressure should not go all the way to the edge on the entire face. It should stop where the two pieces mate. But, you know, I'm, I'm ignoring that because that is not the issue here, okay? All right, so uh, that's this. The, the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to make sure that these guys do not penetrate each other. In other words, the, the cap does not penetrate the, the box. So we're going to create a connection between that face and for the second connection, uh, second component, I'm going to select the, uh, let me hide, hide this silhouette, this is the silhouette that I use to, it's this face, this entire face, okay? These should not con contact each other. Good. All right, so let's bring this, uh, let me hide the, hide that silhouette first. That silhouette, hide it, okay. I did the other one actually, by mistake. So, uh, I think this one I want to hide. No. Start getting this one here. Like this. Okay, good. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Let's bring this in the front. Okay, good. Then we want to create, because of the bolt, we want to create a connection between this top hole and the bottom of the hole. So let's do that here. Connection between this piece and for the second component, the bottom. This is going to be where we're going to create a virtual bolt. Okay. And then another connection between this piece, this piece, and for the second component, the one at the bottom. All right. The only thing we need to do is to define the nature of this uh, connection that we created. So if you go to face to face, if you go to face to face connection, let's see what we've got. We have uh, we have used contact, we have used fast, we have used fasten, we have used pressure fitting, and this one says bolt tightening connection. The only thing is that we don't have a bolt; we have a virtual bolt, so you won't be able to find it here. Now go back and find the the toolbar which says not face to face. Let me see now the next one, which says distance connection properties. In other words, in the connection properties toolbar that you are familiar with, the first sub toolbar is the face to face one. The next one is distance connection properties that I got for you, and you will see a virtual bolt here, right here. Virtual bolt tightening connection. This is a more sophisticated version of it because it has a spring. Uh, yeah. So we click on this, and then it says, "Well, where's the support?" The support is okay. The second and the third. So this one, and then it says, "What is the tightening force?" So you have to know when this bolt is con when this bolt is uh, tightened. What is the actual uh, tightening force? So there's a number here that I used from the previous uh, runs, maybe last year. I'll make it 100 pounds, okay? This you need to know. And if you don't, then you're going to, of course, learn it in machine design uh, uh, course this year, for this summer. Well, let's do it again for this side. So another one is, uh, okay, so the, the last one, same thing. Now, uh, one other thing is that we remember we, the first one was to, 
to create contact between the cap or the lid and the box. So this this one, you should make it a contact connection. Good. Now let's run it and see what happens. I'm pretty sure. I hope it's going to work. I'm pretty sure it will. The only the only thing that I criticize myself is the fact that I kind of ignored that gasket thing and. I'm assuming that the pressure also is applied where the two pieces uh, mate. So uh, I don't like that, but it was too much work to change it. So I'll leave it the way it is. So let's run it. Okay, good. So let's get the deformed shape now. All right. <laughs> you see, these two places are bolted. That's why there's not much movement. Whereas uh, here, of course, the 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 uh, uh, the, the lid uh, bends up for now. Again, it, this I don't like it because of the way I modeled it. There shouldn't be any pressure acting simultaneously on the area where the gasket is. Supposed to be, and then you look at the the uh, one needs a stress, and uh, that doesn't surprise you because uh, you know uh, it should be symmetric. Now the fact that you have a checkerboard pattern here means that the mesh is not good, and you have to look at it more carefully. Okay. Now if you want to see it uh, on the undeformed shape, so just say show the result to me on the undeformed shape, which is this. Now that makes sense. I mean. The both of these two is internally pressurized, and then uh, uh, you know, it should work like that. All right, so uh, don't forget to save. I'm done as far as this uh, assembly problem is concerned. You, you, you're not, you're not going to see any more segments on this, and uh, you're responsible for everything that's done. All right, take care, guys.